We're going to talk about transconductance amplifiers now. And the way these work is they take a voltage in and they give you a current out. You get a current source out. Operational amplifiers, you remember, are voltage in, voltage out. In the ideal case, this resistor is infinity. There's not, it, it's an open, an open circuit. Uh, comparison between the two. Transconductance. So you have um, the GM, the transconductance, times the V in here. You'll notice you don't have this. The, the deal is, by eliminating this stage, you're making it much faster. So an operational transconductance amplifier does well at low voltages and high frequencies. Gain, here's the big difference. Gain, um, ideally for an op amps infinity, this is the transconductance. Differences. So this is the model for an op amp. Voltage in, voltage out. Model for a transconductance amplifier. Voltage in, current out. Basic circuits. So this is an integrator. I out is going to be the transconductance size V in. And then um, you integrate that. The capacitor integrates the current to get V out. And so you have an integrator. In the frequency domain, so it's I out given by this uh, times the impedance. Well, the impedance is 1 over J omega C. So this tells you the voltage out for this situation versus frequency. This is a simulated resistor. I in and I out have to be equal for zero amps on the input. V in is on the same node as the input. So you get I out is a GM, negative GM V in. Given the, this fact also, then you get V in over I in is equivalent to a resistance, which is given by the reciprocal of the transconductance. This is an adder. This current adds to this current. So you have GMV1 plus GMV2 gets IO, and this is your resistor. This is your simulated resistor. So the output is going to be the simulated resistance times the current. So it's an adder or a multiplier and an adder. The equivalent, so this is the equivalent resistance that replaces this circuit here. We'll find out later. GM is programmable. So we'll find, yeah, here, here we come on that, which is why this is useful. You have an equation like this. GM has to be less than some upper boundary and it has to be greater than some lower boundary or it won't work. And this is a typical value. So you can control the transconductance. That can be useful in a lot of different places. So here's your variable resistor. You can control the transconductance. You set a voltage or current in, I should say, there we go, and to produce this resistor, figure out the current. Um, well, GM has to equal the uh, reciprocal of 25,000. And it's greater than the minimum, which is fine. It's less than the maximum. Here's the maximum. And the current then would be this value divided by 20 or 
two microamps to program it. Floating resistor, same sort of operation, except remember the regular, the one grounded terminal, you had a terminal grounded in the last example for resistance. Now you've got something that can float. And when you work through it all, let's see, I1 has to equal negative this, which is, um, here's V1, V1 is connected to this node here, and then I2 is GMV2, um, there we go, GM2V1, let's see, V1 comes over here, there it is, V1's at this terminal also. So when they're equal, then you have a gain that the um, the current I1, this is what you want, I1 is going to equal 1 over GM V1. When we connect up all the equations, we see this is a floating resistor. We looked at a 25,000 ohm resistor. Let's look at a 10 mega ohm. 10 mega ohms is 10 to the negative seventh Siemens or reciprocal ohms. And that's too small. It's got to be this value or greater. So it won't work. Another OTA might do it. Now, this is your summer circuit, and there are, and the problem is to produce produce this. So, um, 10 V1 plus V2. So, GM1 is going to be five times, or um, this current has to be about five times more than this current. Okay, there's our equation. GM1 over, over G3 equals 10, GM2 over GM3 equals 2. Um, you've got to pick one. Two equations, three unknowns. So it's a design problem. you got to pick one. So a reasonable value and then then you can figure out the current to produce this. Real circuits, by the way, it's not quite this precise. This might range from 10 to 50 or something of that nature. So you might uh, have, a, have a potentiometer or something to tweak it to the very end. So once you know this, you can figure out the other two. GM3 is a tenth, that means GM1 has to be uh, one and GM2 has to be a two tenths from this equation here. Okay, now this is a subtractor, so you're going to have a negative current here, shall we say I2 and I1. So this is going to go as um, GM1V1 minus GM2V2, negative. And then this is your simulated resistor. You can replace this with a resistor in your analysis, by the way, in your analysis. Multiplier. The current here is going to be um, this voltage over RG, which 
tells you know 20 times this is going to tell us the gain so now we got a v1 times v2 factor a multiplier i'm going to go on to the next circuit um next time next video